Hey, everybody. We are really late on this. It is 4 o'clock on Sunday, the 30th. <clears throat> and uh, I know I said it was due to weather. Really, it was due to me needing to mow the lawn. I wanted to get a jump on that because the weather was so nice. And then I had to take a shower. And then I had to make lunch. And then I had the whole day gone. So, <laughs> sorry we're late. Here we have Blarney taking a nap. Sorry I woke you up, Blarney. Blarney is very much enjoying the weather. It's a good Sunday for a nap. I could use a nap now that I've done all that. I'm a little tired myself. Here's Scuttlebutt. Hi, Scuttlebutt. Scuttlebutt's looking for more steak. Scuttlebutt helped me with the steak I made for lunch. Thinks there might be some more somewhere. Panther wouldn't try it. She was interested, but she wouldn't actually eat any. Oh, and here's Gabby. Where have you been, Gabs? I had some steak for you. I saved some in the fridge. You can have it later, okay? Oh, that's very much like, there was some really good stuff in this hand before. Where did it go? Uh, you ate it, Scuttlebutt. You ate all the good stuff. Are you waking up now, Blarney? Is your mom waking you up? So, uh, I should give you guys an update on Brooke, by the way. Yeah, um, I, I think that Brooke's adopter has been posting on our Facebook page. So, if you're on Facebook, you can check that out. Uh, I'm not really on Facebook myself these days. That's Our Facebook page is all managed by Lisa. So, um, you can um, check it out, though. I think that she's on there. Uh, otherwise, we have been sharing some of the updates and stuff on our Discord. Suffice it to say, Brooke's doing very well at her new house. Uh, she settled in very well, and from what we understand, um, she's, she's enjoying it quite a bit. So everything is good. Everything is very good for Brooke, and I'm so glad that we're getting those updates. I'm playing with a piece of fur. You don't need to be playing, playing with that. You have real toys everywhere, Blarney. Yeah, Brooke's doing just great, and I'm so glad to hear it. it it's, I think this has really worked out for her, finally. And boy, did that take a long time. But uh, in the end, uh, I think it's really good news for her. Boop. Uh, Bebop, we'll get to Bebop. I think she's doing fine. And uh, her blood type is cat. I mean, I wouldn't know her blood type, but I'm sure our vet does since we've done blood work. I don't think there's any reason for me to know it. What's up, Banter? What are we playing at?
Oh, thanks. We'll just put a link in the chat to uh, the, the latest update from Brooks the Doctor. That's great. So, uh, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, these three have been shut in here for most of the day because I've been out, you know, mowing the lawn and all the stuff I had to do today. But now they've got a chance to go out and explore and they are enjoying it. I think they're going to get the third spa night tonight because I've been missing seeing them. And that's a fun way to do it. <laughs> they're being very playful right now. Hey, kids. Everybody's biting everybody's toes. I'm even involved. I need to bite some toes. Otherwise, the circle's not complete, right? He's looking out the window, smelling all the fresh air. Hi, Gabby. Hey, Gabby. She's such a sweetheart. Now, remember, Gabby is going for her spay on Tuesday, which is the second. I know in some of the previous chats here, I've said the first, uh, but I had the date wrong. It's Tuesday the second, and then she's getting adopted on the 14th, which is a Sunday. And I'm pretty excited for both of those things. I think it'll be interesting to see if she quiets down quite a bit after she's spayed. I, I suspect she will, but we'll see. What's up, Anther, with your little silent meows? Well, let's go up and see Bebop. See how Bebop is doing today. Uh, Melinda, you asked about uh, Custard, and Custard's doing great, actually. DJ says that he's really enjoying here. Let's, here's Eddie. She says that, that Custard is really enjoying his time out there. Hey, Gabby. Gabby just came up behind the camera and was going to swat at Eddie. That's why he jumped back. But he didn't go very far. You don't need to do that. <laughs> and he's like, uh, now she's looking at him like she wants to start some trouble. Gabby, don't start some trouble. Don't do it. I'm going to pet Eddie. You're not going to attack a cat I'm petting, are you? Oh, you are. Wow. All right, Gabby, you might have to go back to your room if you're going to keep doing that. I don't know where Eddie just went. He probably went. Oh, he left. Now he's heading out. He's like, ah, oh, there's better places for me to be. Well, that's a smart move, Eddie. All right. Well, let's do go up and see uh, Bebop, like I said. Hola. Hi, Eddie. You're a pretty boy. I know. You just want some love. There's Ari. Hi, bud. What? Did you say something, Ari? You did say something. What are you doing, Scuttlebutt? You can't just follow me around because I'm going into the Bebop's room and you can't go in Bebop's room.
Hey, Logan Berry, what are you doing? Gabby, yeah, don't you dare start trouble. I really will put you up in your room. There's banter. Logan Berry. Gabby. Gabby, you don't need to start anything. Aw. They just touched noses. Too cute. Your kids get it, Gabby. Alright, well, hopefully she won't try to start anything while we are going up to see Bebops. There's Smuggy, by the way. Hi, Smoker. Hi. Smokey got to have some steak, too. Apparently I made it pretty well, because she doesn't have any teeth, but she still managed it. Um, I saw someone ask, how do you tell Acro from Loganberry? And uh, there's a few ways. But if you look online for the difference between... Hi, Eva. If you look online for the difference between a mackerel tabby and a classic tabby... Hi, you've got a lot to say. Uh, Acro is a classic tabby, and Logan is a mackerel tabby. Mackerel tabbies have stripes like this, like this. But the classic tabbies have a big, bold swirl on the side, like Acro. So that's one way to tell them apart. And... <laughs> Hi, cutie pie. So, uh, little Bebop here. Is very pregnant. Uh, our x-ray showed that she has seven kittens. The vet thought that she would deliver a week ago, but she's taken a little longer than we thought. Yes, but I think that's good. Uh, really, I think um, if she took another week and, and she gained like a pound before she delivered, it would be perfect. I really think that would be great. But, you know, we don't know exactly when her due date should be, but we do know that she is doing great. She's perfectly healthy. And uh, no concerns about the fact that she's taking longer than the vet's guess, of course, because that's just a guess. Hi. Uh, Lisa told me that I, she'd gotten some emails from people that uh, were asking about things, um, various things about her and whether she's okay. And uh, another thing I should point out is that we've had a lot of people that are like, have you thought about a C-section for her? And um, the answer is, well, I mean, we thought about it for sure. I talked to the vet. The vet doesn't think it's indicated, and I, I don't think it's indicated either. Um, so, you know, uh, we, don't, we just don't think it's necessary. But it did come up. We definitely considered everything, and we also have, uh, you know, every kind of contingency plan. We always do. So I don't need to get into that, but just rest assured that uh, we're ready to deal with whatever comes up. Plus... Um, uh, there was something else. Oh, I think she, she said that she got a few emails that were to the effect of, you know, do you guys, um, I, I think they were, I don't know if I understood it exactly, but I think there was some concern about whether we were aware of the kittens kicking and moving around. Of course we are. That's pretty much all we watch all day long. If you were on the Discord chat, uh, people are watching her little stomach and the little kittens kicking around in there and stuff all day long. It's really fun to watch. And uh, every time that you'll see me come in the room, I always spend some time sitting with her with my hand just resting on her. And I do that so I can feel the little kittens kicking. And they're all very active in there. They've got important things to do. So I think that they are in uh, very good shape. And I'm excited to meet them. I know you're all excited to meet them, but it's really hard to guess when they are going to be ready for their big debut. It could be... Um, could be today, could be a week from today. Um, I've been sort of doing the math on, you know, how much the kittens usually weigh when they're born and that kind of thing. And um, my thinking just, you know, but like back of the napkin math, uh, so definitely this is not, um, you know, anything scientific, but my thought was basically if she could get her weight all the way up to nine and a half or 10 pounds before she delivers, then I think we would be in really good territory. Um, but I'm sure that the kittens are going to be pretty healthy no matter what, even if they are a little light because they're all so crammed in there. 
she's she's just been like I didn't think she could get any bigger than the day that she showed up, and she's so much bigger now. It's amazing. I hear a lot of noise out there. I think we're going to make this one a short one so that I can go keep an eye on Gabby and uh, maybe even put her away for a while. I'll make it up to her when she has a spa night tonight. Yeah, someone on the Discord chat, I was it... Was it Jamestown, I think, maybe uh, made a, a gif of her laying on the floor earlier today and then uh, it fades in a football shape over her and it's a perfect fit. It's pretty ridiculous, actually. Hi, Beep Bopper. <laughs> you said it. Yes, that's a good point, Sage. It is a moment of the American football, not a soccer ball, but I bet you could do the same thing either way. She's pretty round. I know, I know. I thought you were as big as you could possibly get the day you showed up here. Sometimes uh, one side sticks out more than the other, and sometimes they stick out more than other times, and I think it's just because the kittens sort of change their position in there a little bit. Yeah, so sometimes you'll notice that. I think right now she's looking pretty even. Uh, hearts here, I'm sure that's from when we did the blood test on her which is just part of the stuff that we always do for every cat that comes through. We want to make sure that we know that they're healthy, so we do complete blood work. And that was just a week ago. It takes a long time for that fur to grow back, um, but they do a little shave so they can get the blood out the right way. Yes, meow. Meow. So that's why she's got the little shave spot, that's all. It's a good question, Alexandra. I have no idea what she thinks about her predicament. Uh, interesting to wonder if, you know, she gives birth and she's just like, where did these kittens come from? <laughs> Who knows? Oh, yeah, I should mention, uh, Sage just posted, yeah, 8.36 pounds today. She, she gained a, a good amount of weight overnight. We had good poops in the litter box. We had good pee. She, it was really a good day for her so far. She's very healthy. And uh, she's been eating a lot more. Uh, mostly prefers the RC mom and baby cat dry food. And uh, it's just, it's good news all around. It's really great. Yeah, I think you're right. I think, I mean, I, mean, I don't know, like, on what level she understands what's going on, but certainly on some level, I think she does. Um, uh, we don't, I don't think we know exactly how old she is, but the paperwork that, uh, the, that we brought her in said that she was, I wanna say two years old, but it, it had the little thing marked that that was an estimate, so we don't, I don't think we know for sure. But two years makes sense. You know, I'd believe it, I'd believe three. I would even believe four if you wanted to tell me she was four years old. Cutie pie. 
Boy, you think you're uncomfortable. You make me keep chasing you around the room. I can't get comfortable either. <laughs> I don't think she's sad at all. I think she's happy. Uh, she's just got a sort of a um, plain face, you know? She's just got that face that doesn't look like she's excited, but she's happy. She, you can tell she's rubbing herself on things, and she's meowing for attention. She's got her tail going. Uh, that usually means that she's a little agitated, but I've noticed she does that a lot. Yes, mrap. Uh, Belle did that too. Belle's tail was just constantly going, regardless of how happy she was. Yeah, she's definitely doing much better than when she showed up. I mean, when she showed up, she just wanted to hide in the box um, as much as possible. But then she's slowly been uh, more and more active. Now she basically spends all day out laying on the floor. I don't know why she's picked the floor as her favorite spot, but she has. And she's got so many options, you know. She's got the floor and she's got a nice little cat bed and the beanbag chair. And this is a folded up um, uh, bed for me to sleep on when I start spending the night in here with her. Um, and she's got her box with the blankets in it, and uh, oh, she yeah, she's even got a pastry board in case she wants something that's very cool, temperature-wise. So she's uh, she's got so many options, but for some reason, it's the wood floor that she likes the best. No accounting for taste. And I know I've mentioned, uh, I check her every day for whether she's got any milk coming in. And so far, still nothing. Uh, now, that's not a, you know, that's not an absolute indicator. We've had mom cats that really didn't show any sign until after their kittens were born. So, it's a, I mean, it can be a good indicator. It usually is, but it's not always. So, the fact that, that she doesn't have any doesn't mean she's not going to deliver today. But I don't think so today. I, uh... Just, we'll keep finding, we'll keep, keep going, I guess. Uh, Catherine, uh, the same way that we always make that d determination, uh, whether we need to supplement with um, extra, um, you know, K KMR or extra feedings for the kittens, uh, the way that we always determine that is we weigh them every day and make sure that they're progressing. And if they don't gain at least uh, 0.2 ounces a day, that's when we start to supplement. Uh, in her case, I feel like we're probably going to be doing quite a bit of it, and I've been strongly encouraged by uh, several people, including my mom, to make this class the one where we learn uh, to start doing tube feedings for the kittens, which I've never done before, but I, I have heard from many people, again, uh, including my mom and Sarah Donner also, that that is a, a very easy thing to do and uh, that it's something that everybody that does what we're doing should learn to do. In fact, when we were at KACON last year um, and Sarah Donner came on and they had a, a panel um, where they were asked questions by the audience and someone in the audience asked, you know, what is something that you guys have learned as fosters that you wish that you'd learned much sooner? And uh, she and Michael both agreed that the, the answer to that was tube feeding kittens. They said, uh, you know, if there was just one thing that we wished we would have learned much sooner, it would be to tube feed kittens. And they went on for quite a while about uh, what a valuable skill it is and how it's really not that hard to learn. And it makes everything much easier so, uh, so it's been on my list ever since then, uh, which is almost exactly a year ago now. It's been on my list to learn how to do. I finally ordered the equipment to do it just, a, um, I don't know, a month ago, a couple months ago maybe. And, uh, and so maybe this is going to be my chance to learn.
I hear one of the kittens meowing at the door. Maybe we should go out and finish up with them. I'll come back and hang out with you though, cutie pie. I will. I'll come hang out. Yeah, I think I think Andrea Chu just cleared up something I was saying before. I don't know how clear I was that that um, the reason I keep checking for the milk is almost always uh, you'll see that as a sign that that she's getting near to delivery. It's, it has happened to us that the milk doesn't come in ahead of time, but it's very rare. Usually, it's a it's a real good indicator. Look how big that belly is. Oh, you're such a spelt kitty normally. She's starting to put on, I think she's putting on some body weight of her own since she's been here, which is really good. Her, uh, her ribs feel a little bit more padded than when she started. That's great. You're a pretty skinny kiddo. Very spelt. Give you a little tummy scritch. Tummy rub? Sometimes she likes this. All right. Mm hmm Well, let's go. Like I said, we're gonna step out and see the kittens one more time if they're still out here. They were right outside. Heard them talking. There's Gabby. Boop. Hi, Gabby. Where are your kittens? Are they down there too? I'm just going to take a look here. No, no kittens. It was just Gabby down here. Okay. Where are them? Did they go back downstairs? <laughs> there's uh, Logan, Acro, and Eddie. Oh, and there's two kittens. Hi, kids. You just ran out of nowhere. I'll, uh, I'll show you real quick what I was talking about, too. So here's Loganberry. Hi, Loganberry. He's got these stripes, you see, the, th the skinny little stripes. We call that a mackerel tabby. And if now if we go over and look at Acro, sitting in the sun, Acro's got this big bullseye circle pattern with the, the thick stripes that are in a circle. You see that? I'm sure you can see that. And that's what you call a classic tabby. So that's the, the real easy way to tell them apart. There's some other things too. Uh, for instance, yes, uh, Acro is not going to, he's sitting in the sun, so he's not going to show us his eyes. But Acro has green eyes and Loganberry's eyes are more yellow. Also, Acro's, his colors are just a little bit darker, um, but... That's how you tell them apart. Also, if you manage to see their faces, uh, Loganberry has white under his chin. He's got a, Loganberry's got a big white spot here that Acro doesn't have. Let's see a little white spot. You see that big white spot there? Yeah. Okay, and there's Eddie. Let's say goodbye with Eddie. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Thanks for joining me today. Thanks for joining the kittens. Thanks for putting up with the fact that I started this thing a minimum of four hours later than usual. Um, whoa, hey, Gabby, come on now. Acro, you're okay. You're okay, buddy. I know. Oh, oh did something get your leg? Got a cramp there? I gotta check him out. <laughs> I think that's a cramp more than anything, but uh, I'll find out. Thanks, everybody. And uh, we will.
see you tomorrow for another close-up.